Hello guys and welcome! My name is Sorin and today we're gonna talk about transformers. Electrical transformers. Actually I'm going to talk, you can leave a comment at the end. I'm also going to show you how to build one or modify a salvage transformer. First of all, let me introduce you to my Box O Transformers. When I was a child, there were no switch mode power supplies, just power hungry transformers. This is my primary collection of transformers. I have some more, but they are ugly, so we'll stick with only these beautiful babies. Some of these are made or modified by me years ago. This is a very nice addition to my collection. It's the same age as I am. I'm old. But before modifying one, let's talk about the basics of a transformer. What is a transformer? The simplest definition is this. A transformer is an electrical device that transforms an input voltage into one or more output voltages. It only works with alternating current. You have a primary winding made from insulated copper wire wrapped around a ferromagnetic core. This is usually made from silicon steel sheets shaped like the letters E and I. The core can also be made out of ferrite. You've probably seen a lot of these small transformers on power supply circuit boards. When you connect the primary winding to mains voltage, the AC going through the copper wire creates a magnetic field in the transformer core. Then the magnetic flux will induce an electrical current into the secondary winding which is wrapped around the same iron core, so you will have an output voltage separated from the mains voltage. A transformer is used to step up, step down or keep the same voltage and insulate the input from the output. This is a step down transformer because the number of turns in the primary winding is bigger than the number of turns in the secondary. The circuit diagram of this transformer looks like this. It has a turns ratio of 2 to 1 because the primary winding has twice the number of turns than the secondary. For example, if your mains voltage is 230 volts and you want a 28 volts output, you need a transformer with a turns ratio of 8.21 to 1. But this is an ideal transformer. In reality, transformers are less efficient if you use only this equation. Because there are a lot of things that affect your transformer, like eddy currents, hysteresis losses, or even missing iron sheets from the core. Now it's time to show you how I've built one of my transformers. It all started 9 years ago. Back then I didn't have a good camera to record, so I took pictures of everything I've built or repaired. The transformer bobbin is made from a copper clapboard. I removed the copper because I need only the base fiber glass sheet. I like this material because it's very strong, non-conductive and can withstand very high temperatures. But the bobbin can also be made of plastic or cardboard, or you can just buy one. The primary winding is made from a salvaged coil. The silicon iron sheets are from an old broken transformer, but you can buy these too. The cat always helped me with my projects. But what if you just want to modify a salvage transformer? This one is blown, but it doesn't matter because I will only use it to show you my method. I'll use a cutter to unstick the first few iron sheets. Be careful with this, it's important you don't lose your pointer finger. You need it to click the like button on my videos. Don't worry about me, I've cut my hands a lot of times, I mean I've done this a lot of times. Next, you remove some eye-shaped pieces. Now you have enough room to insert a flathead screwdriver and whack it with some pliers. That's how you remove the first E-shaped piece. The rest is easy, just use the cutter. This is only my technique, I'm not saying it's the best. If you have another method, you can share it in the comment section. But be careful if you don't have experience with electrical transformers, it's very dangerous. Always unplug it from the mains when you're working on it. The problem with salvage transformers is that you don't know the number of turns in the primary winding. It's the same thing with the transformer I've built 9 years ago. I've lost the specifications. The easiest way is to insert an insulated copper wire, make a secondary winding with a few turns and measure the output voltage. 
This transformer delivers 1.71 volts RMS from a secondary winding of 10 turns. So for 1 volt I need 10 turns divided by 1.71 equals 5.85 turns. Now you just multiply 5.85 turns with the number of volts you want from this transformer. But what's the difference between transformers and how do you know which is the best transformer for your project? Here we have two transformers of different sizes, each has a secondary winding of 10 turns. And this is the difference, the smaller transformer is less efficient, with only 0.5 volts for 10 turns of secondary winding. But let's say you want a 38 volts DC transformer, we start by removing the iron sheets. We need some copper wire, so let's check out my box of salvaged copper wires. For this tutorial I will use a wire with a diameter of 1 mm. I need to wind enough turns to make an output of 28 volts RMS. I'll explain in a minute why 28. I already have a transformer with a similar output voltage. If I join the two outputs we have 28.6 volts RMS. But it has only 2 amps and I need a higher current, at least 3 amps. So I will use this bigger transformer with a much thicker secondary wire. The 38mm masking tape fits perfectly on my transformer bobbin. Then I'll write the number of turns winded so far. Beside electrical insulation, the masking tape also makes it easier to see and arrange the next row of turns. How many turns of secondary winding do we need to make an output of 38 volts DC? We need some waveforms to explain this. This is how the mains alternating current looks like. Here in this corner of Europe we have 230 volts at 60 Hz. 230 volts is actually the root mean square value. To find out the peak value we divide 230 volts by 0 0.707. So the peak value is 325 volts. From this we need a peak DC output of 38 volts. Unfortunately I don't have an oscilloscope. Perhaps if my YouTube channel and Patreon campaign are successful, I will afford one in the future. But for now, we are gonna stick with drawings. I don't remember the number of turns from the primary winding of my transformer, so I can't calculate the ratio. But we know that 5.85 turns gives me 1 volt. So for 28 volts I need 164 turns. It's important to arrange the wire very straight with all the turns one next to each other so you don't waste any space inside the transformer. I'll use a small piece of sandpaper to remove the wire insulation. And we need to thin and prepare the wires for future connections. I'll use my old and trusty soldering gun for this thick copper wire. And now I'll just put back the silicon iron sheets. It's recommended to arrange them in an alternating manner, but when you're in a hurry, you can group them in two or three pieces. The final two pieces will be the most difficult to insert. You can put them between two other pieces and just use a hammer. But hit them right in the middle. If you insert the iron sheets at an angle, you will damage the bobbin. Next we need to insert the eye-shaped pieces. The voltmeter measures the RMS value, so 28 volts, not the peak value of 39.6 volts. Now we need to transform this alternating current into direct current which is used by almost all of your household equipments. For this we use diodes and bridge rectifiers. They come in different shapes and sizes according to their maximum current. A diode is an electrical component that conducts current in one direction and blocks it from the other direction. It's like a water flap but for electrical current. If we connect a diode on one of the transformer output terminals, the current will not change its polarity anymore and will become direct current. This is a half wave rectifier. But it looks horrible, we can't use this. We need 4 diodes to make a full wave rectifier. Or use an already made bridge rectifier. 
And now we have an even smaller voltage. What's going on? We need 38 volts DC. This is because diodes have a forward voltage drop of around 0.7 volts. They start conducting electricity when the voltage reaches this value and practically you will lose a small part of your output voltage. Here we have a very complex circuit where a battery is powering an LED in series with some resistors and a diode. You can see the voltage difference before and after the diode. In a bridge rectifier you always have two working diodes for each polarity change. You need to take this into account when modifying a transformer and give it a slightly higher output voltage to compensate for the bridge rectifier voltage drop. I'll use this resistor as a load and solder it to the bridge rectifier. You can see the average voltage dropping a bit. But if I add a big electrolytic capacitor in parallel with the load, the resulting voltage is smoother and it's increasing to almost the peak value. When the red value is increasing, the capacitor is charging. When it's decreasing, the capacitor is discharged by the load. If I remove the load resistor, the voltage will be exactly 38 volts, because there is no load to discharge the capacitor, so the output voltage is stable. A resistor also helps to discharge the capacitor after you turn off your transformer, because if you don't discharge it, you will have a tiny explosion when you accidentally short it. Now the capacitor is welded to the pliers. Hmm, I wonder what will happen if I try this with a bigger transformer. Nowadays transformers are more and more replaced by regulated power supplies. This is the main disadvantage of transformers, you can't have a regulated output voltage. Here we have a 31.7 volts DC transformer. When I connect a small load to it, you can see a voltage drop of around 1.2 volts. This doesn't happen with regulated power supplies. The voltage is exactly 12.1 volts when I connect and disconnect the load. Unlike regulated power supplies, a transformer is affected by variations of the mains voltage. The outlet voltage should be 230 volts, but you can see that the voltage is not stable. During a day it fluctuates from 230 volts to 241 volts. So if you have a transformer with a turns ratio of 5 to 1, the output voltage will fluctuate between 46 and 48.2 volts. Another disadvantage of a transformer is the weight, it's much heavier than a switch mode power supply. And the more powerful a transformer is, the bigger and heavier it gets. Transformers also waste a lot of energy, even if there is no load connected, they still use a lot of power from the mains. Nevertheless, transformers do have some advantages, they are easy to modify and you can get almost any voltage out from them. The output voltage is separated from the input voltage. A ground loop isolator is basically a transformer with a turns ratio of 1 to 1. A transformer can have multiple output voltages. Let's take for example this transformer with two outputs of 14.3 volts and 2 amps. This is called a center tapped transformer. Some audio amplifiers need this type of double AC power input. You can use the two outputs in series and double the voltage. If you connect them in parallel, you will double the current, exactly like batteries. Or you can separate them if you need multiple outputs. For example, if you need to power a Bluetooth audio receiver board, a bass and treble tone board and an audio amplifier. Because if you connect all of them from the same power supply output, you will have a horrible ground loop noise like this. Then you will also need a ground loop insulator. Here we have a variable voltage transformer. How does it work? You need a transformer with a secondary winding that have multiple terminals. Then use a switch to toggle between the output terminals. And we've reached the end of this video. If you have time, don't forget to check out my Patreon campaign. I hope you enjoyed my Transformers tutorial. If you did, don't forget to like and share this video and if you are new to my channel, click the subscribe button. It's around here somewhere. If you don't, you'll miss my next episode in which I'm going to use a transformer to build something awesome. I'll see you soon. Actually, you'll see me soon.